it's Michelle and today I've got for you a quick workout on the reformer using a small ball. Uh, so we're going to use it to give us a nice range of motion for our spine, get a little bit of abdominals going, and then we'll also use it for some instability under our hips and for our inner thighs, which is always fun. Uh, so it's going to be a great workout, but it'll also feel really good. We're going to do a lot of laying down our backs, which is always kind of nice sometimes. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. So take your ball. Um, if yours is too much smaller than mine, you might find that your shoulders will kind of bump into the shoulder blocks. It's not the biggest deal, but just so you know, if your ball is a little bit larger, you can kind of clear this uh, with our back. Okay, so you're just going to wedge it kind of right up in front of your shoulder blocks. And then I've got two red springs on. You're welcome to do more or less. I wouldn't do too much more though. Okay, so <clears throat> lay down foot bars all the way up. Well, when I say lay down, we're going to lay against this ball. So kind of right between your shoulder blades, your ribs, your bra strap line, kind of whatever reference works for you. That's where we want to have against the ball. So you can kind of test it out. Grab your head and just stretch back and see if you can kind of comfortably get over those shoulder rests, get a nice stretch through your spine. Yeah, we want our low back to be able to stay pretty still and get a nice stretch through our thoracic. Okay, so kind of move around until you get to a comfortable spot there. So we're gonna grab onto our head, and before we even think about what our feet are doing, we're just gonna go into that stretch we just found, okay? So just take a big breath in, find a nice extension over that ball, and then as you exhale, just come up out of it a little bit. It's not, we're not even really just doing a crunch, we're really emphasizing the stretch backwards, and then come up out of it. Okay, one more time. Now stretch back, and if it feels good, you can kind of go side to side a little bit while you're over that ball. Yeah, you can stay in that big extension, or you can come out of it a little bit, okay? It's really good to move in this direction, especially if we spend a lot of time like rounded forward, yeah? So just kind of enjoy that. All right, so now you're gonna take your head up, you're gonna flex your spine, Take your feet into a V. So you're going to go on the balls of your feet, heels together, toes apart, high half toe. I feel like I'm a little low. I'm going to come up a little bit. Okay, so your tail is tucked under, hands are behind the head. Now keeping your heels high, we're just going to push out with our legs here and then come back in. Yeah, so again, you might have to shift around till that ball feels just right. Your low back is rounded and so is your upper back coming forward off of the ball. Yeah, so make sure the chin is away from the chest. You have a good view of your inner thighs. You can really see them finding each other and then returning. Yeah, so the abs are keeping us curled up and off of the ball. Now, when we bend our knees, we're gonna go into that extension we found. So go up and back over the ball, take a breath in, and then exhale, flex when the legs press. Yeah, inhale to go up and back, exhale to curl forward, and then inhale to stretch back. Yes, so the lower the ball is set up down your spine, the more extension you're going to find over the ball. So really kind of gauge that for what feels good to you. Okay, so watching those inner thighs find each other. Now this time, curl up and stay. You're gonna keep the inner thighs connected and just lower and lift the heels one time and then come back down. Do that again. Exhale to lift and then lower and lift the heels and then stretch back. Now you want your neck to stay pretty stiff so you don't want to be tugging your head around too much with the arms. Yeah, it's more about your thoracic spine and then the neck tries to stay pretty stable. Okay, let's do this one more time. Enjoying that stretch back when we find it. And then come all the way down to the bottom. All right. Now, stay on your toes, but let's go parallel if it's comfortable. Inner thighs and ankles all the way together. Okay, now instead of hands behind the head, we're going to take our hands down, kind of hovering right next to our legs, heels high. Now we're propped up. Start taking a little set of hundreds here. So you're going to breathe in and pump the hands for about five counts, and then exhale for those five counts. 
Yes? So the ball is super unstable, so if we're bouncing too much, we're going to feel it go into the ball. So keep it nice and tight and crisp through your arms. Draw the belly button down towards the carriage. Okay, now as you exhale, you're going to push out with your legs, keep pumping the arms, and then inhale and return. Yeah, and it's okay if it's not exactly five pumps in each direction. Just find a nice timing of your exhale to go out, inhale to return. Yes, if you need some support for the neck, place one hand behind the head. Okay, now keep going and we're going to add in that lower and lift of our heels. So we press out, we drop our heels, we lift, and then we come in. Yeah, press, drop, lift, and in. So kind of time that however you like. It kind of ends up for me being about two pumps of the hands for each movement. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. If that works for you, great. Whew, let's do that one more time, not disconnecting those inner thighs when the heels drop. Okay, now this time press out and you can just rest your hands down next to you and take a little pedaling through the feet. Elbows can touch if they're able to. Good, so drop one heel, lift the other. Try not to lean side to side. Just get a nice stretch for those calves. All right, pause and let both heels stay reaching for a second. Okay, now lift your heels up, come all the way down and stretch back over the ball. All right, okay, now we're gonna go to our heels. Be about sitting bone distance apart, not too wide or it'll throw us off. So hands behind the head, press out with your legs, stay flexed up and just hold here with long legs. Now, try to change everything else as little as possible and just pick one foot up to tabletop. Feel like you're stomping that bottom heel away from you and then switch. And you're gonna feel your spine want to lean away from that lifting leg. It's just, that's normal, right? So try to fight that. If you need to have your hands down to be more supportive, that's totally fine. Okay, so just practicing shifting the weight to one leg without having to change our alignment. All right, now come down to the bottom. Now, as we push out, one leg is lifting. So all at the same time, I push and march and then return and lower. Push and down. Yeah, try not to feel any shifting side to side through the hips. Okay, now if you'd like, when that leg marches up, you can rotate opposite elbow towards that knee and then face back front. Now go the other side, twist and then return. So feel your back shoulder blade really pressing into the ball. Yes, and you get your elbow across by rotating your spine, not by just folding your elbow in. Last two. And last one, Whew. and then come in and stretch back. Oh, <laughs> not easy. All right, so now stay on your heels. We're gonna do a little bit more single leg work. So take one leg, reach it over the bar, and we're gonna go into a little bicycle action. So bend your knee on the way out. Now when we come in, feed your leg underneath the foot bar, and then back to tabletop. So just alternating over the bar, and under the bar. If you don't need your hands behind your head, feel free to reach them forward. I kind of like palms up. Gives me a good kind of rotation in the shoulder. So that's an option too. All right, so now leave that leg underneath the bar and we're just gonna do little pulses off of our top leg. Now squeeze this glute, this thigh will be on fire. Let's do five more, getting down as low as you can. Three, two, one, and then come on up and switch legs. Whew. Okay, so take your new leg over the bar. We're gonna bicycle it, alternating under and then over. Yeah, and you should be lined up with your center, nose and your inner seam of the legs lined up. Yeah, so if you're not, that might be telling you that you're leaning off to one side on that ball, hands to the head or arms reaching. Okay, let's do two more, and then we're gonna stay down there and pulse. Ready? Get down and hold, and now we do our little tiny pumps back and forth. Now it's not super heavy, so we have to use the back of the leg to help us come down. 
you down. So good. Three, two, one, and then push all the way out and come on in. Whew. Okay, let's do one last thing here. We're going to go wider feet to the corners of the bar, externally rotated, grab onto your head. Okay, now we're gonna start stretched back over the ball. Our legs are just gonna do regular presses out and in. Our spine is gonna do a circle kind of around the world, okay? So let's go clockwise to start with. So push out, by the time your legs get straight, you will have circled around till you're flexed up off the ball. Now as you bend your knees, you draw the back of the circle to get where you started. So I go from left to right and then circle back around, yeah? So as big of a circle as kind of your ball and your shoulder blocks will allow. You don't have to overthink it too much. Ooh, it should feel really good to get that stretch to the side and back. Let's do two more and then we'll reverse. So when the legs are straight, our spine is flexed. When they're bent, our spine is extended. Okay, let's reverse it and go the other way. So going counterclockwise, I go from right to left and then around and down. Right to left and then down. That's super tricky to not let the low back and pelvis get off course. Good, do that two more times. Get equal flex and equal stretch. Last one. Woo. And then relax. So nice. All right, come up off of that ball. Whew. We are gonna move it to between our knees and lay back down. So have your head rest flat. And then you can leave your springs the same for now. All right, so take the ball between your knees. So we get a little bit of inner thigh connection. Have your heels hip width apart on the bar, arms by your sides. Take a breath in, in your neutral spine. And then as you exhale, just give the ball a gentle squeeze. And then let it go. Yeah, do that a few more times. So kind of adjusting to being flat on the mat. Yes, as you squeeze the ball, the shape of the spine shouldn't change. Good, feel that gentle wrapping of the abdominals around and in. Okay, now this time when you squeeze the ball, you're just gonna keep the squeeze and tuck and tilt your pelvis back and forth a couple times. So rocking from neutral to imprint, maintaining the squeeze on the ball, okay? Getting that low back and pelvis moving. Now we're gonna turn the tuck into a hip roll. So we're gonna tuck our tail under, squeeze the ball even more and roll up into a bridge. Get up to the top and stay. And then as you exhale, roll back down one bone at a time and then release to the bottom. So as we're rolling up, try not to allow the carriage to move under you and then soften to find your neutral. Good, a few more times. So really think about sending the weight over your feet, drawing down through the ribs, up through the hips. Good, let's do that three more times. Really press into the backs of the arms. So that opposition of arms down, hips up. Very nice. Okay, now the next time you get up into that bridge, feeling that nice articulation to get there, hold up at the top and you're just going to take some small little pulses in and out onto the ball. Try not to drop the height of your hips. Yeah, like you're trying to pop the ball for four, three, two. Now pause, maintain the squeeze on the ball and just lower the hips a little bit and lift. Maybe halfway down however far you want to go really down and up, lower and lift, hinging at the hips. Now let's put these two pulses together. So when you lift up, you're going to squeeze even tighter. When you drop down, you're going to let go of the squeeze a little bit. So you go up and in and then release as you drop. Do that a couple more times. Let's do three more. Squeeze. Last two. Now last one, lift up and pause for a second, breathe in, and then slowly roll back down one by one, 
and find the bottom. Whew. Very nice. All right, now getting back to your neutral, put a little squeeze on the ball, and now instead of tucking and rolling, we're just gonna pick the hips up barely off the mat and then replace them back down, yeah? So squeeze the ball as you hover, drawing down with the heels, and then release the squeeze and touch your sacrum down. Yeah, do that a few more times. So your back stays in that neutral, and just use the back of the body to hover. All right, now get up to that hover and stay. Keep a squeeze on the ball, and we're just going to push out and then come back in. Now, you probably won't straighten your knees fully. That's okay, because the ball is there. Yeah, but just go as far as you comfortably can. They'll get almost all the way straight. Okay, now we're going to add on to this. So now when you return, I want you to lift your hips as high as they'll go to your high bridge and then drop when you push out. So up on the in, out and down. Good. Let's do that a few more times. Lift and squeeze. Last three. Last two. And then last one. Pause in here and just roll back down to finish. Whew. So nice. All right, take the ball out, roll over to come up. I'm gonna drop my springs from the two reds down to a red and a blue. If you like heavier, you're welcome to stay. Uh, if that feels like too much, one red would be better, okay? Have your straps ready to go on your shoulder rests. All right, so now we're gonna do a little mid-back series, but the ball is gonna be underneath our sacrum, so it's gonna make everything a little bit wobblier, yeah, to help increase the challenge for our abdominals, okay? So headrest flat, hips are gonna lift up, sneak the ball underneath, and then just settle down onto it. So you want it right on that kind of solid part of your pelvis, right above your tailbone, okay? If you feel like your low back is excessively arched or excessively tucked under, adjust it. You want to feel pretty neutral-ish up on top of this ball, okay? All right, so now connecting to those abdominals, kind of pull in and down with the abs, reach your arms up to the ceiling. Now lift one leg up at a time to your tabletop and just stay here for a few breaths till you feel comfortable balance wise. Okay, this is kind of a new sensation being up on the ball if you're not used to it. If being imprinted makes you feel better, then do that, okay? So as we breathe out, I want you to nice and slowly pull your arms down to hover next to the ball and then reach them back up. So nice and easy. So the arms, this is familiar territory, right? But with the lower body and the hips being up, this feels very different. So take it nice and slow. If your hip flexors ever need a rest, you can let the knees come closer. If you want a challenge, let the knees go a little bit further away, okay? Now we're gonna leave our head down the whole time while our hips are elevated up on the ball, okay? So now let's go into some arm circles. So once you press your arms down, flip them to face the ball, open to a T, and then lift up, yeah? So you press forward, around, and then up. Good, so all the while, while the arms are finding all this movement, the lower body is trying to stay super solid. Yeah, so don't let that kind of response to the movement of the arms be for the lower body to go crazy. All right, now let's just reverse. So we're circling the other way. We open first, then we pull down and flip and lift. Yeah, and you can kind of smooth that together as much as you're able to. Good, two more times. All right, last one. Good, now pause with your arms down by your hips. Rest your elbows if you need to, hover them if you can. Now start tricep pressing with your arms, palms facing forward. Now if you'd like, when, one, when your arms get straight, extend one leg forward and then come back. So now we're adding another element of movement, layering on the challenge, yeah? If that's too much, no need to do it. You can just stay with those tabletop legs. All right, now pause with one leg long, and let's do a few extra tricep presses, leaving that leg lengthened. Whew. 
Woo, that's some good endurance for the front of that leg. Last two, last one. Now come in and bend the elbows and let's switch legs. So other leg will reach long and then do four or five, about how many you did on the other side. Yes, try not to move those legs around. Now pause with the elbows bent. Don't move the arms and just switch the legs for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then find the foot bar and take a little rest. Very nice. All right, so now reach the arms back up, kind of like how we started, reaching directly to the ceiling, and then lift one leg at a time up to the ceiling as well, okay? So you get your feet to point to the ceiling however you're able to. If you can't do it with straight legs, soften your knees until the toes can point up still, yeah? So don't drop them down, keep them pointing up, but soften the knees, okay? So now as we press down with the arms, we're gonna leave one leg put and drop the other forward and then return. Yeah, so these are like little zombie walks with the arms and the leg, and then lift. Now try not to let the lifted leg get any closer to you. It's gonna stay vertical, and then we're just dropping and extending, reaching over the foot bar. So good. Okay, now a few more times. Keep your tail centered on the ball as best you can. Good, now pause in that split, keep your arms down, and we're just gonna switch with the legs. Trying not to fall off the ball. Now go into a little pulsing action. One, two, switch. One, two, switch, pulse, 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 pulse. Last four, last three, press hard into the straps, two. Last one, reach both legs up, and then return the arms as well. Okay, so good. All right, you can kind of roll your hips side to side on the ball. We're gonna do one last one here. So take your arms out to a T, hands a little higher than your chest, float the legs up, and then just pull to the ball, and then open wide. Palms find the ball, and then open. Good, so now if you'd like, when your arms drop, both legs are gonna extend, and then they'll come back as the arms open, yeah? Only reach them as low as you feel like you can stabilize in the rest of the body. Let's do that two more times, reach, and return, last one, and then set your feet down. All right, make sure your ball is centered. If it moved, kind of adjusted a little bit. So we're gonna keep the springs the same on this blue and red, which is a little maybe lighter than you might normally do for feet and straps, but we're gonna keep it. So now push out with one leg carefully, get one foot situated, and then do the same with the other. This is a little unstable, so be careful. Now place the arms back by your sides and reach the legs out long in front of you, okay? So a lot of attention to the abdominals with this kind of stimulus underneath us. So now float the legs up, feel the hamstring stretch out, and try to imagine your tailbone like curling around the front edge of the ball, and then exhale, press down. Good, and then do that again. Lift up, so if being imprinted feels safer to you, that's totally fine, or feels more stable. Um, but neutral would be a good place to be if we can, okay? So again, feel like your tailbone weighs a thousand pounds and it's kind of drooping off the front of the ball. And then come down. Good. Let's do that one more time. Very good. Okay. Now let's turn these into some leg circles. So float the feet up, circle them out and around to the side, and then pull them back to meet at the bottom. Yeah, inhale, lift, and then exhale to circle. So the further these legs get away from the midline, the balance challenge increases. Good, let's do two more in this direction. Good, one last time, feel wide through the collarbones. Okay, reverse, so open first, inhale, exhale as you reconnect the heels and pull down. Good, so 
hopefully you don't feel like the ribs are popping on and off the mat. They just feel nice and heavy into the carriage. So good. All right, so now press the legs forward, turn out and take a few bend and stretches in this external rotation. So bend the knees like a frog, let them go wider than the ropes, and then press and reconnect the inner thighs. Yeah, if you wanna be thinking about the ankles, you can flex the feet on the bend, stretch them on the reach, if that extra bit of coordination is in your practice today. All right, now pause in that froggy bend and hold. Now don't move your carriage, just reach one leg to the side to a straddle. Now we're on the ball, so we have to be really conscious of not rolling off of center and then bring the heels back together. Good, now do the other side, reach away, keep that glute on the bent leg super active and then in. Do that a few more times, reach and then squeeze. Every time your heels meet, give them a little pinch and hold. Good, so this is just warming up how we want our abdominals to be working in this stag shape. Yeah, for when it gets a little trickier in a second, when we start to move more. All right, now pause with the heels together, reach them out in front of you. Okay, now same position, but we're gonna move the carriage to get there. So you bend one knee, straddle the other. Now if all your weight rolls off to one side, you're in trouble, and then come back. Good, other side, inhale, find that stag shape, both knees pretty level, and then press. Good, a few more times. Again, if you wanna think of what the ankles are doing, you can flex the one of the bending knee, point the one of the straight knee, and then they meet together pointed. Good, let's do that three or four more times. So it's as much an exercise for the legs really as it is for the abdominals. So the abdominals and the obliques are preventing the rotation of the torso. So good, all right. Now go parallel with your legs. Take your hands around the ball, just enough to kind of keep it from rolling. Okay, your hands will kind of stabilize it. So now you're gonna bend into tabletop, scoop through an imprint and roll up and off the ball. So now you see why the hands are there, just so that the ball will be there when we come back down. Pull the heels towards your seat, land back on the ball and straighten the legs. Do that again, bend, so we're neutral around the ball, and then I scoop under and push with the abdominals to roll off, pull with the heels to find the ball, and then reach out. Good, let's do that a few more times. So the ball's kind of nice, it's like a stepping stool, right? We're already halfway there, and then smooth back onto it to reach out. All right, one last time. This time when we roll off the ball, move it out from underneath you, roll back down till your tail gets all the way on the mat. Ooh, it feels weird without the ball there anymore. All right, we're gonna finish up with a little bit more feet and straps with the ball between our ankles now, just to get those inner thighs a little bit more. So reach the legs out, have the ball between your ankle bones. Get to your neutral. Find just a gentle squeeze on the ball that you can maintain all throughout, okay? We don't wanna be over squeezing or bearing down. Just enough to feel a little feedback for the insides of the legs, okay? Inhale, bend to tabletop, and then exhale, reach away. All right, now when your legs are straight, by the time they get straight, we're gonna end up externally rotated. And then as you bend, come back to parallel. Whew. So turn out, end up with the toes pointing to the side, and then come down. There we go. So your kneecaps are just spinning underneath the ropes, following that 45 degree angle. So you're making sure it's coming from the hips first. Good, now pause in that turn out, and we're gonna reverse this. So stay turned out as you bend your knees, end up parallel when your legs are straight. Inhale, externally rotate, Ex <laughs> inhale, go back, inhale, and then exhale. Just breathe. Good, all right. 
Now, pause with your legs long and just go between parallel and turned out. You can even go a little bit internal rotated, yeah? Just go from in and out from the hips. Spin from the thighs with those long legs. Good. Okay, now pause in parallel. Lift your feet up towards the ceiling, and now we're just gonna go in a little corkscrew action. So go counterclockwise, let's say, the first time around. So just making kind of an oval shape with the feet. So you inhale and float up to the left. Exhale, press down to the right. Good, you'll feel a little extra weight from hip to hip, not huge, but just a little shift. Good. And now let's reverse. So go counterclockwise, right to left at the top, and then down, yeah? It's kind of going from like shoulder rest to shoulder rest. So not a huge oval. Good, now press the legs down and hold, and just take some little tiny squeezes. So have a little slight room between the chest and the rope. Squeeze and release, squeeze and release. Good, now lift the legs two or three inches higher and keep going. So the hips are just a little bit more flexed. Good, lift the legs another two or three inches and keep pulsing, pulsing, pulsing. Good, we'll do that two more times. Elevate the legs a little more and then keep the squeeze, pulse and release. Go one more time, get as vertical as you can with the legs to do our last set of pulses for four, three, two, one, and then just bend your knees, grab the ball before we drop it, and set it on the floor. Grab the ropes, let your knees go to the sides, and just pull the ropes towards your chest. You can rock side to side a little bit, just give those inner thighs a stretch. Good, if you wanna take a little straddle stretch, if that feels good, you can. Okay, and then we are gonna get our feet out of the loops. Hang your straps up. And then we'll take a little single thigh stretch and call it a day. All right, so come on up, get down to just one red spring. Oh, come off to one side. So we work those hip flexors quite a bit, just holding our legs up, yeah? So come on up, one knee on the carriage, other foot on the floor. And then as you exhale, just open up that back thigh, moving the carriage, and then up. Yeah, do that a few more times. Really draw up through the abdominals, squeezing that back glute. Good, do that two more times. Very nice. Okay, and then walk over or crawl over to the opposite side. Get that same setup. Good, think about driving the hip bones forward as the back leg presses. And then up. Good, exhale down, feel long through the upper body. Ah, two more times. Last one, press the farthest you have yet. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, please give it a like. Leave me a comment down below if you have any feedback or suggestions for future videos. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share this video with a friend. And thank you so much, I'll see you next time, bye.